In today's video, I'm going to talk all about floor signage. So that's signage on indoor floors, sidewalks, pavements, all the signage that you find in these places. So let's get straight into it, coming straight up after the short intro. <laughs> Now here's an example from Forcha Ventura in Spain, in the Canary Islands. A cycle path, it's very, very simple, very common that you see a picture of a bicycle. But what you see also is that color coding has been used. So you can see that the cycle lane is a pink color and the road itself is black. Color coding is an important part of directional signage, especially on pavements, roads, floors, sidewalks. To so start thinking about color coding, this is from another part of Spain. I can't remember where we were, but this is simple signage again, um, pedestrian area and cycling area. The only thing that could be improved is if the walking area, the color of the pavement there, the sidewalk, was a different color. The use of color coding could be better here. This is Plymouth, England, where I'm originally from. And I'm going to take you to the next photograph, a picture of this cycle, and it's faded. This is exactly what you want to avoid. So when you are planning a strategy for floor signage, add in the maintenance plan. How often will somebody go around and check the signage, repaint it? This has to be a part. Maintenance has to be a part of the strategy. This is another picture of Plymouth, England on the Barbican, a famous area. And you can see there that they have pink, reddish area for cyclists on the road. So that's great use of color coding as a form of floor signage. Now, if you are creating wayfinding signage for a museum, an art gallery, anything which is a kind of attraction, you can use floor signage. So when we talk about signage and when we talk about wayfinding, the user experience is tied up in all of this. I quite like this signage on the floor and it's very well designed with hard materials. Now, if you go through an airport, let's say through the duty free area of an airport, and I think this is either in Cardiff or Birmingham International Airport in England, but you can see that the black area is the guide, the, the route that you take. So again, this is color coding and you might not think about it when you walk through these places normally. Now, this is Gatwick Airport in London, England, and I quite like this. So this is, as you come out of one of the lifts or elevators, you see this floor signage. It's very well maintained, and it makes it very clear what level, what floor level you must go to according to which airline you are using. So I quite like this, but this, you can be sure, will involve maintenance as part of the signage strategy here in this airport and just there's another picture as you're approaching this sign I really like this and this is complemented also by overhead signage which you can see at the end there which um, supports what you're seeing and supports you as you walk this route into the main terminal in airports and locations such as hospitals you want to tell people you want to guide people between the parking area and the main terminal or the main building, the main hospital building. So it's quite important because people can easily get confused. So this type of signage is very good. Again, this is painted signage, very, very simple. But as long as you maintain the signage and you repaint it often. This is a great example. And this is one of the reasons I was inspired to do a post about floor, sidewalk, pavement signage. This is very interesting signage also in Las Palmas uh, in Gran Canaria, Spain. And there's five different directions. It's floor signage that tells you which attraction and in which general direction you should walk. Very simple. It's kind of entertaining. It's a little bit of a user experience here and it's very effective. So floor signage sometimes can work very, very well. And the thing is, people do use this. I observed for a few minutes, a lot of people were stood there. They were looking at these signs and they were following them. 
So people do tend to use this type of thing if it's designed well. This is in Heathrow Airport. Now the problem with this kind of signage, it's stickers. It's stuck to the floor there. The problem that I saw, that I observed, is that you get a lot of people in, for example, high heels, scuffing, damaging the stickers here. It doesn't take very long for this type of floor signage to get damaged. And because it's indoors, it can't be painted. So when I showed you a lot of the signs, a lot of the pictures I've just shown you, they're outdoors. Now this is floor signage that is indoors. And so that's why they're using stickers and not paint. In hospitals, it works very well if you have just one color and, and you can easily replace the stickers. But this is a little bit designed a little bit more complex in terms of the graphics that you see on screen. So it's not necessarily going to work very well. If you're going to use signage indoors on floors, keep it very simple. Now, I don't know if you have an IKEA superstore in the town or city where you live or somewhere near you. Very, very simple. They want to guide people around the store in a general direction. This is done very well in IKEA. And that's also IKEA. Now, I'm just going to take you on to the blog post that I've done already. And I've said there that floor signs in some situations can be very effective as a solution. And it's worth considering floor signage. And it can be very good for guiding users along long paths. So do think about the materials. Is it going to be painted or is it kind of sticker or is it some kind of other material, stone? Do think about that and it's going to be affected by if you're doing this indoors or outdoors. So think about are people walking over this signage? If so, it will need to be very durable. I hope you found that useful. I think there's a lot involved in floor signage, both indoors and outdoors, and the, the, the materials. So much to think about. It's a very cost-effective solution sometimes, but there are things, as we've talked about, that you will want to think about. So I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to this channel. You can see the button just below this video. There's also a bell icon. If you click the bell icon, then you will get reminded of when these videos go live on the Wayfinding channel. It's great that you watch this. Thank you very, very much. I would love to see your comments below because I know that you've probably got experience as well. Maybe I can learn something from you. You can leave your ideas and comments or ask questions. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.